Give it up for women out here doing their shit and not doing that. Give it up for the fucking women out here doing their shit and not. I know we got some fucked up sisters, you know, and they sprinkle them on us. But for the most part, for the most part, now come on now. The women, the women, give it up for the motherfucking women. Not you hoes. You hoes, you gotta stay back today. Hoes gotta stay back. This is the, this is the, we live in a season of hoes, man. Everybody gonna be a hoe. Cause for real, everybody gonna be a hoe, man. It's fine to be a hoe. But you can't be a protocol, now. You get what I'm saying? It just don't make sense. Again, yet again, here with She Got Jokes 2, volume 29, um, hosted by uh, Vanetta Musu Reeves. I'm your host of the Red Carpet. This is obviously not the Red Carpet, but Mr. Three Keys. And I'm here with the extraordinarily beautiful, talented, uh, extremely creative, uh, a urban intellectual, which is what I would like to call her. Amen. Uh, and I just made that up. Um, could you please tell the people um, your name? Andy Remy, y'all. Andy Remy. <laughs> and, and if you don't know, that voice is synonymous with uh, advice that you don't necessarily want to have. Right. With the most comedic genius spin mm -hmm. on the internet uh, today. How you feeling this evening? Oh, I'm feeling lovely. I, I'm in good hands, good people, good around, good family, good friends. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> Doing y'all shit. <laughs> well, well, listen. New Jersey would like to welcome you. Is this your first time in New Jersey? Oh, hell no. I used to, this is my old stomping grounds back in the day. We ain't gonna have no conversation about that, right? <laughs> uh, not on camera anyway. So, <clears throat> um, this is an all-female production. Uh, she got jokes too. And she, this is like her seventh show. I've known her for forever. Uh, what does it feel like? Have you ever been on a, a, a cast, a production where it's all female? No, no, I have not. And this is completely awesome. This is wonderful. I, when Vanetta reached out to me, I told her I had to be a part of it because, you know, I like to see stuff like this happen, you know, especially with women, you know, black women who really out here doing what they saying they supposed to be doing and not what the fuck they think they doing. Well, well, see, I don't know if people just saw how she went from a nice, pleasant individual and it flipped from 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 Bruce Wayne to Superman or Clark Kent to Batman I don't know whatever it is right it just that that flip I don't know if people caught it but so now if people don't know you are synonymous with the internet and dropping jewels which is where the urban intellectual came from uh, talk about how you have transitioned from being everybody's therapist so now you're on stage making people laugh. Well, you know, the process wasn't an easy one. But, you know, I was called to the challenge because everybody was like, you know, I, I was doing this already. I've been a hairstylist for 20 years. So I was in the barbershop. I was in the salon doing exactly what after I do my clients. I used to sit here and have conversation with them. And it would conversation be real, but it'd be funny. So it was like, you know, somebody said, you missing your calling. So one day I just decided, okay, you know what, let me go ahead and touch in on that. I felt like it wasn't necessary. If enough people tell you you're missing out on something, I'm one of the motherfuckers who want to figure out what the fuck I'm missing out on. You know what I'm saying? And you keep telling me you're missing out on some good dick, I'm going <laughs> to test it. I'm going to test that, but you know. <laughs> so, so now, when, you, when you're looking at what's going on on the internet in regards to you, you immediately don't think comedy, right? Right. Um, so it all makes sense. Yes. Where did the comedic part come in? I think the comedic part was more of me like it's like the dirty side of things that are not supposed to be funny. Things that are real that people probably are real honestly serious about. I like to take those and be like put a spin to it so we all know they're very controversial topics. A lot of people are now sensitive because we're living in this cancel culture. So because everybody's so sensitive, it's almost like I'm poking at the bear. Because I feel like it's no need to be sensitive. Like you don't have to have your emotions wrapped around it because your emotions is not gonna get you to greatness. It's not gonna lead you to where you need to be. You just gotta understand that everybody have a different eye on seeing things. So I feel like, you know what? Why not take the things that everybody's out here that they don't wanna talk about and then turn and make a, make a comedic spin on it, you know? And so it's just my mind just going like, you know what? I know that guys is out here doing their shit. I know females out there doing their shit. And I know females, again, is out here doing our shit.
is out here doing our shit. <laughs> it's a fact proven. <laughs> so, it's a lot of, you know, social media is really designed today for more of, it's geared towards our women, you know. So I can go on social media and find about 900 pages that cater to my likeness and, and the things that I want to hear. But I look at, especially men, heterosexual men, not homosexual men, but heterosexual men don't have that platform. They don't have that space to go to. They had it in Kevin Samuels. God rest his soul, he's gone. So I, you know what? It just seemed like, you know, what better else than a woman who's a little easy on the ass? to do the job for y'all. So now you did mention Kevin Samuels and I was gonna I was gonna transition into that. Have you ever been compared or labeled the female Kevin Samuels? Has that ever come up? All the time. So I'm late to the game. And I all the time. All the time. It was Kevin Samuels. They even told me I went to Kevin Samuels what his university. <laughs> they said I went to the motherfucking university with the <laughs> It's Kevin Samuels and then, of course, uh, Richard Pryor's after that. It's, like, it's kind of like for both, you know. But both of them pretty much, you know. But Kevin Samuels, believe it or not, I thought Kevin Samuels was funny. He had a place in comedy for me. I'm for real, because the shit that he would say, the shit that he would do, it was fucking hilarious. I love the way how he used to just hang up on them bitches. Click up. <laughs> so I'm going to let you say the B word. I don't want to say it. I got two daughters. But so... One question that I do remember writing down was, is your perspective from a educational standpoint, like did you go to college to study the human brain and to study humans and relationship, or is this, this just from life experience? Well, I did go to college and I do have a degree, but that was business, so no. I actually got this from just having conversations with people, like just doing my job that I always did for 20 years, having those real conversations. And those real conversations that helped me to comp you know, compartmentalize as far as like a type for that person, a type A, a type B, a type C type personalities. And I just found that a lot of things was cohesive with certain personalities. People who did certain things, they had, they lived certain lifestyles. Like everybody kind of did the same shit. And then my mind just started clicking. I said, okay, I got you figured out. I know who you are. I know your type of person. <laughs> so when, when did that start for you to compartmentalize and and determine what type A, B, C. I don't know shit about none of that. I don't even follow zodiac signs or none of that. But, and, here go the real question. Do you need security when you walk around now? Because a lot of the, a lot of the takes that you have are extremely controversial. So, are you the type of person to read the comments and when you read the comments, do you say, that, oh shit, I need to get some security? I ain't scared of none. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Look at the camera. Fuck you going to do about it. I ain't scared of a motherfucking person. Fuck you going to do about it. I said what the fuck I said. I stand on who the fuck I am. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's my attitude. That's my attitude. But you know what? I get a lot of love when people see me on the street, including women, and I dig in their ass. You know what I'm saying? You see how women all came together? Because I'm not telling a lie. That's the difference. If I was telling a lie, they be like, you know that bogus ass chick, we can't, we can't, we don't even see where she going at with this because this is not the truth. But it's the truth, and you can't run away from the motherfucking truth. You gotta acknowledge the fucking truth, right? No matter how I deliver it, I just happen to deliver it to your motherfucking ass. It's like, it's like no Vaseline, I'm going straight up in that motherfucking ass. Straight up in that motherfucking ass. Now, the next... <laughs> <laughs> now, the next question is, right, so... When, when you look, so she's got like over a million views <laughs> with all of her posts. One post got 247,000, another post got like 197,000, whatever, I did my homework. So, with those types of takes, you have extreme influence. Has Hollywood come knocking at your door yet? Oh, absolutely. I can't say their names, but... It's some big people that's looking and loving and commenting and telling me some different things. I, I know I, I always knew that I, I, I did something different or I had something different. I just didn't know to what degree, what magnitude. And it really just, it just really allowed me to like step outside of myself. Because you know what? Your own fear will stand. If you let your own fear stand in the way, you never even really get to that part. So it's like 
when Hollywood started knocking, I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I might be on to something bigger than what I thought, you know? And I look forward to it, though, because I'm going to change up motherfucking Hollywood. I ain't not, ain't nothing Hollywood about me. Fuck that shit. <laughs> the, the, way you, the way you switch from Scala yes. to Jenny from the block. Yes. Indy from the block is what yes. we're going to call it. Um, your, your takes are so aggressive. Yes. But it seems like at the heart, yes. at, the, at your core, yes. you're a sweetheart. Yes. How do you find that balance? Where, where, do, you, where do you find that balance? Okay, so I have me, <laughs> and then I have Indy. <laughs> and Indy is a part of me, but Indy is kind of like that parent that is in your face. You know? You have a, let's say for instance, you have the person that's the teacher, and she may have a different approach, and she might talk to her students and say, okay, you know, classroom, everybody quiet down, sitting down, and then you have that one teacher come and say, oh, you motherfuckers, sit the fuck down before I fuck you up. You understand? Now you gotta know which children, you know what I'm saying? It may, your child might be the one I gotta talk to like that. You understand? Some children understand, let, just quiet down, but your child may need that sit your motherfucking ass down. So it's, it's, it's all of it is housed to me, but I know how to balance it because I know when it's needed. I know when it needs to come out. <laughs> so I can't believe, uh, I could believe it because I literally thought, I was nervous to sit down and I'm like, man, she going, she, you seem a little aggressive. And I've been with a black woman forever. I grew up in a household, black mother, you know. Yeah. But you are completely different. <laughs> Which is why I brought up Hollywood. Cause I'm like, if you could switch from that to this, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. You, you're gonna make a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I'm speaking it into yeah. existence with Hollywood. Oh, absolutely. So, it's 50 year anniversary hip hop. How has hip hop influenced your life? Oh my goodness. Oh, old, old school hip hop. I don't know about this new school shit. I can't fuck to this shit. But that old, old school hip hop has influenced my life. It's because it's the stories. It was the real fucking true artist, artistry at its best. You understand? That's, that's what I listen to the lyrics. I'm not a hook beat type of fucking female yeah i catch that on the back end but i need to i need to like hear that shit because i really listen to the words i can i you know the feel the pain because you know every comedian including myself we've all went through things we have layers of our life where we we went through something and so i'm the way i'm doing it is in a comedic form and i know of course a lot of hip-hop artists and even singing artists they have their way of ministering us through song and, and, and through, you know, and through poem, poetry or whatever else. And so, when I tell you about the influence, man, that's my shit, especially New York and Jersey. Y'all get, I fuck, I fucks with y'all. I fuck with, what you, what you got on there, what you got on? Call me king, I know that's right, call me king. Call me king. All right, so this interview going on and on and on and on. And we'll talk off air, but I just want to say thank you for sitting down and talking to me. Um, it went exactly how I envisioned it. I'm totally lying. Um, I'm appreciative. I'm thankful. Uh, congratulations on a killer experience hosting the show. And I just want you to tell the people uh, where they can find you on social media, any events that you have coming up. Um, you can find me on social media, Indie Remy Comedy. That's on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and then upcoming events. Uh, well, um, I have a release. Actually, I have a release coming up for the comedy series that I just did. So that will be coming. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Man, let me tell you, I had an opportunity bestowed upon me that most comedians won't even see in their 10th year. I had, it, was, it was given to me in my second year of comedy. And to be a, um, a comedy host of a, of a series, and it was, uh, we shot six episodes. Hopefully those six episodes, some, you know, we're gonna pitch it to the big ones. They looking like they gonna like it. If it goes well, you know, you, you, know, you know how Def Comedy Jam was looking, motherfucker. You, see, you know how it was looking. <laughs> That's where I'm going to see myself at. So look forward, we look forward to that. So I'll be back in New York. I'll be you guys. But in the meantime, between time, thank you for y'all's support. Thank you. I'm Mr. Three Keys. 
This is the fabulous Miss Indy Remy, and she got jokes too. Peace. Thank you. What's going on, motherfuckers? This is Indy Remy. I'm with MTV. You watching MTV? We here at She Got Jokes too. What the whole fucking crew is going down, motherfuckers? We got female comedians that's talking that bullshit. Okay, MTV, check them out here.